from the Great American Ballpark in downtown Cincinnati. Game three of this four-game series between the Cubs and the Reds. They split the first two games of this set. And yes, our second Bark in the Park night. 500 tickets sold out in less than two hours when they went on sale for each of these nights. So nice to have them with us and nice to have you with us. Alongside the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball. Johnny Cueto, he has been the main man ever since he returned to face his Cub team after a month on the DL to start things. And he's trying now to finish off the year with the best DRA in the National League. Uh, one guy that does have something to finish for, I guess you could say, is Johnny Cueto. Uh, something that he could actually take home, the, the brass, if you want to call it. Some kind of something to put on your mantle at the end of the year. Uh, nobody's going to the playoffs, but Johnny Cueto has been pitching as though he's going to the playoffs. And he's having to go up against some other pitchers like Clayton Kershaw, who is pitching tonight. He's going to have to be on his game because of the fact that if he gives up one run, it's just a little bit bigger spread. He doesn't have as much to gain or as much to give when you give up a run in his situation because he doesn't have as many innings as Clayton Kershaw. Now he's cooled off a little bit here in August and September, but Cowboy, you and I were talking a little while ago. I mean, heck, you can't be perfect every time out. No, and, and, he, and when, you, when you watch Cueto, a lot of his innings uh, have been here lately. I think a lot of that is is just pressure and 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 getting used to the fatigue at the end of the year. And I really think that you'll see Cueto tonight with a little bit more relaxed attitude, a lot more strikes in the strike zone. He's really pitching inside a lot. And against this club, against this club, uh, that's what you want to do. Okay. We'll see how it plays out. We know a lot of these youngsters have been playing very well for the Red Legs. We'll get a look at them, or some of them anyway, again tonight. We'll talk more about that when we return.
transmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. I guess our bark in the park night. Are we uh, and our four-legged friends going to stay dry tonight? There's been talk about some rain. Let's check in down on the field with our good friend, Michelle Boudelette. Hi, Michelle. Good evening, Tom. Yeah, you know, we have a few showers in the forecast, but we just got cloudy skies right now. And I'll tell you what, temperatures are pretty comfortable out here. We're looking at temperatures for the game around uh, mid-70s, even low 70s by the end of the game. Just a slim chance for a spotty shower early on. I think you have a better chance of seeing a shower or two. That's primarily going to be after about 8 or 9 o'clock. So I think they'll get the game in just a little light rain by the end. Guys, I'll send it back to you. All right, Michelle, great having you with us and all the great work she does with SPCA Cincinnati and with us here on Fox Sports Ohio. A lot of homegrown talent, Cowboy, being built up by the Cincinnati Reds organization. I don't know that I've, that I've ever been in an organization or around an organization that has put this many young players in the big leagues that are not just first round picks. There's a lot of first round picks on this roster, that, but being in the big leagues and coming from a 34th round or from a 22nd round, that tells you that your teaching and your development in your minor league stages is really doing their job and doing it right. Well, there you're getting a look at a whole fleet of them. There's Heisey, a lower round draft pick, kid out of a small college in Pennsylvania. Chris is in a lineup tonight for game three. And Johnny Cueto in search of the ERA crown. Three more starts to go for Cueto. Reds Baseball is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. By your local Ford dealer, Ford, drive one. By the Regional Tourism Network. Book your trip at CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Whenever you're feeling good and hungry, it's Skyline time. Today, Roberto Clemente Day around the major leagues. A Hall of Famer who passed far too soon trying to help those underprivileged in other countries all over the world really and his name is carried out now in Major League Baseball every single team has a Roberto Clemente award winner for the Reds it's Jay Bruce part of an on field ceremony a short while ago and it recognizes a player who combines a dedication to the community along with outstanding skills on the field see past winners for the Reds they name one individual winner among each team that's represented and then that culminates in the one person being named the ultimate winner of the Roberto Clemente Award. Correct. 
take a look at Mike Flutie's starting lineup tonight. Starlin Castro, Reed Johnson, Aramis Ramirez to start it. Carlos Pena, Alfonso Soriano, and Marlon Bird in the middle. Darwin Barney, Giovanni Soto, Casey Coleman against Johnny Cueto, making his 24th start of the year. He missed the first month because of an injury in spring training. That's part of the issue for Johnny tonight. As I was trying to explain when we were opening the ball game, Johnny's room for error is smaller because he doesn't have as many innings as Clayton Kershaw. But his room for success is greater as well because of that same fact. If Johnny gives up no runs, his ERA really drops. Liner into right field on a 1 1 pitch by Starlin Castro. So this game begins for a third straight game of this series with Castro reaching base to start the game. Take a look at the Reds on defense presented by Ford. Stubbs flanked by Heisey and Bruce in the outfield. Again, it's Francisco and Renteria on the left side. Brandon and Joey on the right. Cueto and Ramon Hernandez, a battery. Castro walked and scored in a three-run first inning against Dontrell Willis in the series opener on Monday night. He walked and was stranded at third against Mike Leake in the first inning last night. And that's certainly that first inning success by Leak had a lot to do with the success he had the remainder of the game. And that will hold true here tonight for Johnny Cueto with Starlin Castro already at first base. Reed Johnson in very limited playing time has put together a very solid year and this might be too. Francisco Phillips it is a double play. How sweet it is. You pitch inside and you pitch inside effectively as Cueto has done all year long. You get the ground ball right to the third baseman. Just make a quality throw. Next thing you know, they're both headed to the dugout on one play. So now Ramos Ramirez. Swing and a miss, strike one. Ramirez right in the middle of a big story that was written by the Chicago Sun Times earlier today about the Cubs having to make a decision on his option for next year. He's making a pile of money. And it is the Cubs option to pick up whether or not they want to bring him back. There was another story in the Chicago Sun Times, and boy, was it a whopper. Quoting some inside baseball league sources. There's a bouncing ball that'll roll into center field, a base hit. So the Cubs were trying to put together a package of Walt Jockety as their general manager, Tony La Russa as their field manager, and sign Albert Pujols. Boy, now that is one doozy of a story. We have no idea if there is a grain of truth to any of it. But it certainly sells a few newspapers, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Controversy, as always, sells newspapers. Big time. I imagine every one of them were sold out, especially those that were wearing uh, two birds on a bat, if you know what I mean. Now Carlos Pena with a runner at first and two men out. Pena 232 batter, 27 home runs, 76 batted in. Well, this guy at the plate now and the man that stands on deck. Both of them are vulnerable to the changeup and the breaking ball. So it will be important for Johnny, especially early in this ball game, to be on both of those pitches. Oh, and two on Pena. The fastball is outside. Plato starting for the fourth time against Chicago this year. He made a season debut on the 8th of May in Chicago. Shut him out in six plus innings, allowing five hits. They knocked him around a little bit at Wrigley Field. First week of August, 
Guido's worst start of the year. He allowed seven hits and five earned runs in just three and two thirds innings. And then on the just completed road trip, Johnny pitched a good ball game. A no decision. Seven innings, three runs. Well, as we said, you can't be perfect every single time. But the thing for Cueto is to continue to try to stay as relaxed as possible and make pitch after pitch. Regardless of what happens behind you, regardless of what happens with your offense, just make pitches. Sort of end things in the Cubs' first inning. Stubbs waiting, and indeed it will. Two hits, a man left. The Reds coming up in a scoreless game. Brandon Phillips, Edgar Renteria, and Joey Votto, one, two, and three. Jay Bruce in a cleanup spot. Chris Heisey in left. Put Juan Francisco down at third. And a latter third of Drew Stubbs, Ramon Hernandez, and Johnny Cueto. They'll be facing left-hander Casey Coleman. The numbers are not very pretty for this young Cub right-hander. Well, they're really not, Tom. You look at the innings pitched, 69 innings, 89 hits, and 50 and excuse me, 89 hits and 38 walks. His numbers are a little over the top. He's almost got two base runners for every inning that he pitches. So the best thing that the Reds can do for Johnny Cueto's bid for the ERA title is knock this baby out of the ball game in a hurry. It should be noted that Coleman faced the Reds back in the month of May when he was in their starting rotation and pitched a very good game. Six innings, four hits, two runs. He walked three batters and struck out six. Key for Coleman is changing speed. He is going to try to get you. Out in front early and uses fastball in late. He pitches backwards. Casey's family is the first family in Major League Baseball history to have three generations of pitchers reach the major leagues. His grandfather, Joe, had a 10 year major league career, including an all star season back in 1948. His dad, Joe, Pitched for 14 years in the major leagues and was an all star with the Tigers back in 1972. His dad was a very good pitcher. Well, the, the numbers for Casey in the minor leagues were awfully good at some stops that he made as well. But the bottom line is they don't pay you the big bucks down there. 
for a fastball right by Brandon Phillips and that's out number one. Take a look at Chicago defensively presented by Ford. Bird in center playing by Soriano and Reed Johnson. Same infield we saw here last night. And Giovanni Soto hanging aside. Edgar Renteria 256. Knocked in a run in a 2 1 victory here last night. Edgar had three hits, a double, a pair of singles in that run, batted in, and four trips to the plate. Renteria's numbers are starting to pretty much end up where you thought they might be quite honestly when this season began you may remember going into the year the game plan was Paul Yanish was going to be the regular shortstop for the team probably starting five days a week maybe six days a week went to Rio with a little bit of playing time there's a base hit in the left field and really based on you know that sort of plan Renteria's batting average has been on the rise it keeps going like it's going. He ends up somewhere in the 260s, mid 260s before all is said and done with if he, you know, 40 if he had, RBIs. Tom, if he hits 260 at all, that's an awfully difficult task to put on any player, veteran or not, playing on the kind of basis that he's been asked to play. Now, he's really not had the the everyday scenario. I know he's played three days in a row here, maybe I think at the most maybe five days in a row, but but not given a, a month long stretch where he got to play every day. And trying to get a rhythm playing three days a week is awfully difficult. See that backdoor breaking ball there from Casey Coleman. Soft away, and then he'll try to pop you with that inside fastball like he did to Brandon Phillips. One and one to Joey Votto, and it's taken right on the inside edge to get ahead. He's got just enough movement on that fastball where he can start it off the plate and run it back to the corner. Renteria short lead over first one and two to Votto and that's in the air left field Soriano drifting back to the warning track and he's able to haul it in two away and Jay Bruce coming up. When you watch Casey Coleman Tom he will give you different types of. I guess different types of mechanics or a different type of motion when he's on the mound especially out of the wind up. He'll do some different things. He'll look like a regular wind up and then he'll stop, almost stop or slow down, go into almost a stretch like motion. He uses just about every kind of weapon that there is to hide the baseball and to keep you from centering the baseball with that bat. Straight in the air off the bat of Jay Bruce in a shallow center field and Bird is there to retire the side. Renteria one out single is left at first and we're scoreless at the end of one.
ever since Yonder Alonso was brought to the major leagues. And you stack him up with a minimum of 75 plate appearances. Among all other rookies, he'd been wearing it out. Got an awfully good stroke and a very good idea of the strike zone, whether it be right hander or left hander, as you saw that last pitch there in the last frame, a left handed pitcher, and he was hitting that baby a long way. Quickly on two to Alfonso Soriano as we begin the second inning on this Wednesday night in Cincinnati, game three of this series between the Reds and the Cubs. The two teams combined for seven home runs in a series opener it was all Chicago 12 8 winners that night. But behind Mike Leake and Francisco Cordero and just enough offense the Reds beat Ryan Dempster in a 2 1 decision last night. It's amazing to me that. Soriano with his hands and the hip quickness and hand quickness that he has can still catch up with a 94 mile an hour fastball after seeing breaking ball after breaking ball. Short left center field Stubbs watching as Heisey calls him off one down. Tonight's Powerball jacket is up to twenty five million dollars and that's brought to you by the Ohio Lottery play today. Clouds creeping in. We heard from Michelle Boudelette before the ball game. There's a sharp single in the center field by Bird. Third hit tonight for the Cubs. It seems to be a little breezy. It does out there, at least that that we can feel. And sometimes for a pitcher like Cueto that has that good hard sinker, that just a little bit of breeze helps you a little bit. You can tell when Johnny comes out of that turn or gets that front shoulder going a little bit earlier, that ball just elevates immediately. That's the one adjustment that he has learned on his own to make. You watch this front shoulder. When this shoulder goes that way, the ball is going to go up that way. That's not what you want when you're pitching. You want to keep that baby down there around the kneecaps. Marlon Bird only four stolen base attempts, successful three of the four. Darwin Barney at 281. He has worn out the Reds this season, especially in this ballpark. He had two more hits last night. Look at those numbers overall against the Reds. If you come to the plate and you think you're going to get in there and get real comfortable against Johnny Cueto, you got another thing coming. He is going to pitch inside. As a matter of fact, some there are some people that think he pitches inside too much. Are you one of them? Uh, no chance. I don't think you can pitch inside or not. Especially with the ball running the way his is. You got a kid like this, Darwin Barney up there that's trying to shoot the ball the other way. You saw that last swing, and that was after a fastball that was right around his face. Wado did not get the call that time. He thought that could have been strike three. Gary Darling 
working behind a plate tonight. Paul Emmel at first, Rob Drake at second, and Al Porter at third. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Now caught in a rundown is Bird. And this rundown should play. Should take care of the side and a go. Strike him out, throw him out to end the second. Still no score. Bronze statue that will be just outside the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. That will be unveiled at 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And then we'll have a special pregame ceremony beginning at 6.30. Johnny Bench will throw out the first pitch that night. He'll be joined by many of his former teammates from back in the Big Red Machine days. So come on down to the ballpark Saturday night. Brewers in town. First pitch swinging to begin the bottom of the second inning is Chris Heising. One pitch, one out. Well, that ball got up in the air and just stopped. Thought he hit it better than that. Two weeks from tomorrow, the regular season comes to an end. The Reds still have seven games remaining after tonight on this. Final homestand of a 2011 year, and there are tickets available for every game, so why not come on down one more time if you're able to? We'll play tomorrow night at 7 10, night games Friday and Saturday, day games Sunday against the Brewers, night games Monday and Tuesday against Houston. We wrap up the home slate on Wednesday afternoon, and the Reds go out of town for their final six, including the final three in New York, New York. Speaking of New York, very interesting. A road trip the Reds will make in the 2012 year. That schedule was released earlier this morning. Some of you may have seen it. The Reds are going to open their season on a Friday against what used to be called the Florida Marlins. They're now going to be called the Miami Marlins. That'll be opening day, April the 6th, right here, of course, at Great American Ballpark. A couple of weekends during the year against St. Louis. We'll get that back up for you here in a second. That ball fouled out of play. You see, travel to New York. The 16th and the 17th, the Reds will play the New York Mets. The 18th, the 19th, and the 20th, they just stay in New York and they play the Yankees during interleague at Yankee Stadium. It's pretty cool. Uh, I in Detroit and Minnesota in town during interleague play. I would say that's a. It's quite a bit of um, time in New York. I don't know that I've ever spent that much time during the baseball season in New York City. So you better really like New York. 
Well, that ball is hammered. Oh. All the way to the wall in the left center field on a ball that barely cleared the shortstop's head. That ball was mashed. That was a pitch that started inside and was meant to run back over the inside corner. And they tried to get it up, as we've seen now for two nights in a row against Juan Francisco. Instead of pulling off the ball this time and swinging and missing, he stays right on top of the ball and drives it the other way. Now, when you're hitting a high fastball, that's what you have to do. You have to drive it the other way. Because if you try to pull the ball, most times you're going to miss it or pop it up. This is really the first time for all of us, and that includes the Reds manager, Dusty Baker, and the entire coaching staff, that we're getting a look at Juan Francisco for a number of days consecutively. For those of you that have you know, watched the Reds this year, you know that when Scott Rowland went down earlier this year, Everybody was bummed out about that, but there were a lot of people very excited to see Francisco finally get a chance for at least a couple of weeks to play every day at third. Well, the very first day he was in a lineup, he gets injured on a play at first base. So then he goes on the deal. Well, then when Roland comes back later, Francisco comes back later. When Roland gets hurt again with the shoulder, which of course required surgery, Francisco got hurt again down in the minor leagues. So his timing has not been good. He's been unlucky. So when you see balls like that and hits like that, you're saying, huh, haven't seen that before. Well, there are there are many that will tell you that this kid can hit big league pitching on an everyday basis without even thinking twice. The problem that everyone thought that he was going to have was in the field. And we have seen some spectacular plays over there at third base. A couple of them in the ninth inning last night. We'll get inside the prep zone this Saturday on FoxSportsOhio.com. Elder will take on Cleveland Saint Ed at seven. Columbus Grove takes on Lima Central Catholic at 7:30. That is Saturday inside the prep zone on FoxSportsOhio.com, presented by 1-800 Safe Auto and SafeAuto.com. I'm glad you're doing that one because I, I would have said Lima CC. They go by that. <laughs> I wouldn't have known Central Catholic from the man on the moon. No, 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 no. That, uh, a lot of those schools over in Newport, across the river, Newport Central Catholic, they go by NCC. You're all right, big boy. All right, I'm just checking because I would have said I might have said something. I don't know what I would have said. You'd have been all right. Lima, Lima, Lima. That's one of our great stops on the Reds Caravan every year. I, well, that's that's the one I know. It's Lima, up in the northwest part of Ohio. That is always a great stop on the Reds Winter Caravan. We're sponsored by our great friends at CincinnatiUSA.com. We'll be out on the road again come late January, early February. Out of play by Ramon Hernandez. One ball and two strikes. I got to get back. I think I'm due this year to get back on that uh, that swing that takes us through my alma mater in Athens, Ohio. Love going on that play. Like them all, but love that one. Always have a lot of fun in a town. Ramon Hernandez thinking about a little fun, and he's made it three nothing Reds. Call the dog, boys. Call the dog. It's a fastball up and in the middle of the strike zone, and that's what you're supposed to do with it. Hammer it. See if we can call some dogs, see if they can go find that thing. Well, we have over 500 of them out there down the right field line.
Tapper to the second baseman Barney and Cueto thrown out. Two away in the inning. Spare time during the winter down in Jackson, Mississippi, to maybe uh, do the local weather. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you would have you would have a great cold, bit man. going down there, you know, because a lot of times the local weather folks are some of the most popular people in town. I mean, you look at a guy, you know, we've had Michelle Boudelette with us here a lot this season, but you know, they're Monday through Friday weatherman over there, a big name in Cincinnati for a long time. Our buddy Tim Hedrick. And there are others, Pat Berry in the past, and many, many others around. But uh, you know, you'd have quite the bit if you wore like a, a big, big cowboy hat, put on the Wranglers, Thanks. some cowboy boots, a different belt buckle, maybe get people to send you in belt buckles, and uh, you know those George Strait, you right. know, cowboy shirts that he wears all the time. I mean, you'd be looking good doing the local weather every night. That's not happening. <laughs> Why not? God. Even if he just popped in there maybe on a uh, Sunday night to give everybody the, the whole rundown for what's coming up during the week. You can ride a horse onto the set. <laughs> <laughs> just trot right on in there. Huh? I think it'd be great. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who feel the same way. Uh, Ramon Hernandez rode one out of here. Three runs shot in that third inning. Three nothing runs in front. So, um, no, I mean, I, I agree with them just to, just to keep me keep me healthy. And, I mean, next year, I mean, I, I look forward to being a 200-inning pitch guy. And, I mean, that's one of my goals next year is, is uh, make it as far as I can. And yeah, believe me, everybody uh, in the Reds organization, all the fans, everybody looking forward to, to taking the collar off Mike Leak, if you will, looking ahead to 2012. Well, he's just in... He's in unknown territory. I mean, there are very few pitchers that come right out of college and go right to the big leagues. Usually, you have some minor league seasoning of a a year or two, or usually about three. And for Leak, <laughs> have any? I mean, he had those two weeks this year, but I mean, that really that doesn't really even count. Strike three called to Giovanni Soto. That's back to back strikeouts for Johnny Cueto. Both of his strikeouts in the game so far. Time now for our progressive text poll question. 
And we don't mean to leave anybody out, but we just whittled it down to these four. Which rookie is most likely to succeed in 2012? And this is in alphabetical order. Yonder Alonzo, Zach Kozart, Juan Francisco, catcher Devin Mezzarocco. Text your answer to 37664. Message and data rates do apply. And again, it's no slight whatsoever to, you know, the Todd Frazier's out there or anybody else that has been brought up. But those four guys seem like Chris Valeka and others uh, seem like they are primed and ready to have a legitimate chance to be an everyday player. I think there's no doubt about it. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that here in August and September. Showed you some of the numbers from Yonder Alonzo. Uh, you, you've seen Francisco, what he's been able to do over there at third base. And obviously, Scott Rowland is the incumbent, but you still want to get some semblance of playing time. I mean, the, the best case scenario would be able to have a place where you didn't have to push Roland so hard where you, you push him into another injury. And if you have that choice and you can play a guy like Juan Francisco half of the time, I would think it would, would help you maintain Roland for a heck of a lot longer at full strength. And Reds fans are, are such smart fans. I think you're getting a real look in the numbers right there. We're seeing very early on, and already we've had uh, nearly 2,100 of you uh, text in, we're told. But Zach Cozart is the one guy of those four that, at least on paper, is in a position where there's a real good chance he's going to be counted upon to be the everyday guy at a set position. Yes. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think that Cozart is the incumbent at shortstop for 2012 even though he's injured right now and, and not able to play. But I don't I don't think that there's any reason to think that there won't be a full recovery without any issues. And knowing him the way that I do. He'll be he'll be ready way before spring training starts. But what happens by having that surgery now you get to have some type of mental layoff when the season is done. So at least he'll be able to take some time away from the game. He won't be going straight from baseball to rehab and he'll be able to have some semblance of a time off. Meanwhile Johnny Cueto after retiring Soto and Coleman easily to begin the inning has walked Castro and now hit Reed Johnson. Just got a piece of his uniform. You can see the uniform right there about the bottom of the C on the cubby. The back leg of the cubby bear. You could barely see the jersey move. Now the always dangerous Aranis Ramirez with runners in scoring position and Cueto just ate him up. One pitch, one out and out at bat and that's all she wrote for the Cubs. Two men left on base. Middle of the third and the Reds behind Cueto in front three nothing.
instant win game card for a chance to win World Series tickets. Compliments of Scott's. Renteria Votto Bruce against Casey Coleman here in the bottom half of the third inning with the Reds leading 3 0. Thanks to a double by Francisco, a walk to Drew Stubbs, and a three run home run from Ramon Hernandez in the Reds' second inning. Talking about Renteria creeping up on that 260 mark. He's only two points away at this point. They do just signing that one year contract to join the Reds after winning the World Series Most Valuable Player Award last October with the Giants. It's quite evident that he still has some baseball left in him. Now, whether or not he'll be getting a chance to play every day again at his age, that remains to be seen. But he certainly has been a much better second half player. In fact, he has played quite well over the second half of the year. Well, he's gotten a lot more playing time in the second half of the year as well. Early in the season, he was a once, once in a week guy because Giannis was playing every day. There was, I mean, Giannis wasn't hurt. Here, watching him in the second, watching Renteria here in the second half, he's getting some more consecutive opportunities to play. That pitch was outside. Come for the Reds, stay for more fun, make it a weekend, and book your discount hotel package at CincinnatiUSA.com. Track says it's a strike. Maybe I'm wrong. Can't believe I just said that. That's the benefit of having a fastball with some movement to it. You can start it off the plate. Hitter sees it as a ball. And at the last second, that maybe runs right back over the corner. In a strike to Joey Votto. He flied out to Soriano and left field his first at bat. That was one of those swings where it looked like he got out on the front foot just a little bit and didn't quite get that back hip into the ball. Took a little bit of his distance away. Really play Votto to pull in the infield. They shade him to hit it the other way in the outfield. Most teams play Votto pretty much straight up. Three and two. And I think some of it just depends on how they're going to pitch him. Uh, there were some times where both he and Jay Bruce, they were playing. You know, both of them dead pull had all their infielders except for the third baseman on the right field side of second base. Votto continues to add to his league leading walk total draws a one out pass here in the third. Right now our Hall of Fame baseball writer Hal McCoy is standing by at FoxSportsOhio.com. Why not check in with Big Hal? It's FoxSportsOhio.com presented by 1-800-SAFE-AUTO and SAFEAUTO.com. 
what is this now uh, 39 years at uh, Al McCoy has been covering Reds baseball for many years of course for the Dayton Daily News and now a big part of our team at Fox Sports Ohio there he is what a guy. I think he's been covering the Reds one year longer than my dad. I think he came in the 1973 season, if I'm not mistaken. I thought they were the same. I thought Hal had one more year. Maybe he does. On a go, swing and a miss, and a throw is high, and Votto. Who nearly stuck in the ground when he went to make that headlong slide. You see that oftentimes early in a game after the infield has been watered down. On a summer night, it would have dried out by now, but it's gotten a lot cooler here tonight you and can, not quite dry. Yeah, you can see that big, huge dirt on that front side of that shirt. Watch the slide. Yeah, you're right. You can see his feet come up. Of course, there have been all kinds of tricks played by grounds crew through the years. <laughs> now, depending on the team that you're playing or what kind of team you have as your home ballpark, everything from, you know, may how much they'll water down the area right around first base where a team that's coming in that steals a lot of bases likes to run a lot. They might make it a little bit too wet for them to have good footing. You know, those speedy teams, you water down that area and then you water down the area in front of home plate so the ball. Won't get out of the infield. It just stays right there. That way it won't bounce real high when they slap it in front of home plate and try to take it off. You know, it has a lot to do as Bruce looks at ball four, how you cut your grass in the infield. Slam depending on your pitching staff. If you're a ground ball pitching team, you might thicken that grass up a little bit. If you're a team with a lot of speed and you like guys on your team to get on base, you might cut it real low so those balls skip through the infield. May have a little bit of slant to that line as it. If you have a bunch of sluggers, then maybe that any ball that goes down the line rolls foul. If you have a lot of speedsters that like to bunt a little bit, then maybe that ball rolls along that chunk line and it stays right on it. It maybe rolls back fair. I have often seen some of the best bunters, one of them being Juan Pierre, coming out early and rolling balls down the lines to check to see which way those balls were going as long as they stayed on the dirt. You were reading my mind. That's the same guy I was thinking of because, you know, we don't get to see him much anymore now with the White Sox, but. When he come in with the Marlins and the Rockies or whatever, he get here real early, and he, that's all he's doing: stand out there and rolling them up the line. Because you have to know if you ball's going to go foul, then you got to know where you want to put it. And he was that good where he could put it pretty much where he needed to. Slow roller, they won't get two, they get the out of Heisey. Both Votto and Bruce advance. So Francisco will bat with a pair of runners in scoring position and two out. Reds leading three nothing. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Boy, Casey Coleman didn't want anything to do with Votto or Bruce. We'll see how he does with. Francisco here after Francisco hit the ball so hard the last time out. Especially with that base open over there at first base. What do you think? I think he'll be pitching to Drew Stubbs here shortly. Uh, I would have to say I would agree with that. Of course, you never know. Juan Francisco can hit a mistake pitch as well as anyone. Just because it's not a strike doesn't mean that he can't reach it.
And it's into right field. He'll drive in a couple of runs. So Francisco, they take the chance. And he makes some pay. Two run single for one to give the Reds a 5 nothing lead. Okay, the more you watch him, Cowboy, the more you like him, don't you? You just have to believe that that ball was not ticketed for the strike zone. It was ticketed for off the plate. And by the time Francisco got to the ball, that ball was off of the outside corner. It was not going to be a strike. And he's still able to make contact on a line and get the two runs in. That's what I like. Production. In crucial situations. Two out RBIs, folks. That's what you get your contract for. That's a big time hit. You got two outs out there. The pitcher knows all he's got to do is make a pitch and you're out. And you're able to come up with a base hit like that and not only bring home the guy from third, but the run from second as well. Now Francisco running. He's showing off all his talents here tonight. And he has a pile of talent. Casey Coleman really picking up that front leg. And not only that, but the fact that Giovanni Soto just cannot throw the ball to second base like he used to after the shoulder issue. Bounce down to Ramirez, and that will end the Reds' third. Couple of walks and a two-run single by Francisco puts the Reds in front five nothing. Proudly serving America's restaurants, schools, retailers, and our military around the world. JTM Food Group. By your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. For a dealer near you, visit buyatoyota.com. By GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Moneyball, starring Brad Pitt. In theaters September 23rd. Rated PG-13. On this day, all around Major League Baseball, we celebrate Roberto Clemente Day. The Reds team representative, Jay Bruce, their Roberto Clemente Award winner, and we'll wait till the end of the year before the player in Major League Baseball is officially crowned the Roberto Clemente Award winner. But they all do great work, and, and so do many others on all teams in baseball. Now that's those are not usually the guys that get the front page and the headlines. But I can assure you from being down there in that dugout there are more guys that give back than you can ever imagine. Oh 
Line and Brandon Phillips off the bat of Pena. Right with a 5 nothing lead with one out here in the fourth inning. Time now for our AT&T trivia question. Who are the only two players inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame before the five-year waiting period? Normally that is the length of time it has to pass from the time a player plays in his last game to then when he can be on the ballot for the first time and be eligible for baseball's Hall of Fame. I think I actually know those two. Really? Yeah. You believe it? You're kidding. No. Well, one of them. Nope. I take it back. Well, I think they. Uh, I want to take a look at Johnny Cueto. Maybe Ramon Hernandez saw something he didn't like. So the assistant trainer Stevie Bauman. Uh, something's going on with um, with Johnny. Looked like he was stretching his arm over the top of his head. I mean Johnny does a lot of different things out there movements and stuff like that you see him kind of move his arm and immediately Hernandez was coming to the mound. But what happens sometimes Tom especially on a cool night like this you may throw a pitch and your tricep has a lot to do with the way that you throw the baseball. It's your accelerator. And sometimes you might feel a little spasm or a little cramp or something in the back back there just because of the way that your your arm rolls over because throwing the baseball is a very unnatural motion. But then again, when you have a guy like Johnny Cueto who has done what he's done this year, you want to make darn sure he's all right. Tell you what, his body language doesn't look very good. He threw uh, maybe two or three more pitches than you would normally see a pitcher throw when he well, wants I, to find out if everything's all right. I agree with you. I, I think that's why Brian Price went back and asked him hmm. again if he was okay. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that. As will the Reds. Whenever you throw the hard slider and you you're reaching away and when you're throwing the ball away from your arm side which would be down and away to Alfonso Soriano that's when you put the most pressure on that tricep or the tricep I'm trying to remember the name of it now I'm going blank but it's the closest to your Shoulder muscles. Don't look for help from me, big boy, on that. No, I, I'm. I just. I don't know the name of it. But that was a good breaking ball there, and he seems to be totally fine at this point. Uh, this breaking ball goes straight down, and that's the reason that Soriano popped it up. You get the spin, and you see where that ball ends up. I, that ball will go straight down. I don't know that you could throw it any better than that. Well, now here comes Dusty Baker. Here comes Steve Bauman again. Here comes Brian Price again. And the head honcho wearing number 12 wants to know exactly what's going on. By the way, Johnny Cueto right now at this point in time is six innings shy of qualifying for that ERA title. But they don't care anything about that standing out there on the mound right now. Well, no, that's. We're going to take him out of the game. And I, I, I think that's a pretty good decision, but. Certainly we hope that young man is okay. He has been the man for the Reds this year. He's continued to get better and better and better ever since he came to the major leagues and made that first start right here against Arizona. 
when he allowed one hit and struck out 10 without a walk in his major league debut. And if we get any word from the Reds clubhouse on Plato's condition, we'll pass it along. Our skyline chili call to the bullpen will bring in Sam LeCure. See Johnny Cueto squeezing the bottom of Dusty Baker's tricep. And I think that is the area. And you really have a couple of muscles back there in the tricep that kind of split off at the top of the shoulder. And obviously, Johnny was either having some spasming there, some cramping there, something enough to where it was bothering him. And I think in, in this kind of situation, especially at the end of the year, uh, you got to take him out of the ball game, find out what it is. And it may not be anything at all. It may just be the fact that we're pitching, uh, or Johnny's pitching on a night where the weather has changed dramatically over the time from earlier today to where we are right now. I mean, it's flat out cold. And that may have. That may have affected it just that just that one little deal. Well, you heard Michelle Boudelette tell us before the ball game that there was a front rolling in here. There is a chance of rain. That's why it's nice to see LeCure get ready in a hurry because Cowboy, I mean, obviously you'd love to get through the front five here with this lead. Yeah. So you could have an official game. Obviously, our first and foremost thoughts are that Johnny Cueto is okay. That by far outweighs anything to do with the weather. But Front that is coming through is supposed to hang around until about the middle of the day tomorrow and then get really nice again for the next four or five days. Well, I can assure you that Sam LeCure knows that he needs to get it get it going right now because he's got all the time in the world. When you come in for an injury timeout, you have as long as you need to warm up. And I think Sam's loose. That was 91 miles an hour. Here's a young man who's put together really a, a second good year in a row. This one a much more extended year for Sam LeCure. Well, last year they brought him up and Seemed like every time he took the mound as a starter, he was pitching against a Cy Young Award winner. And that's <laughs> not an exaggeration. He was. He was seemingly every start. Pitched well. But appears to have found a home in that bullpen. And Stubbs will run this one down in front of the wall. And that'll retire the Cy. We played three and a half. Waiting on word from Johnny Cueto. Reds lead 5-0.
Well, if a Reds player hits a Toyota sign during our game tonight, Matt Williams of Fairfield, Ohio, will win the beautiful new Tundra on display each and every day here at Great American Ballpark. Matt, good luck. I didn't know Matt Williams had left the Arizona Diamondbacks and had moved up to Fairfield, Ohio. Uh, you know, I was thinking the same thing. But evidently. They're having a pretty good year. Why would he bail? Yeah, I guess he just decided he liked this part of the country better. <laughs> Got tired of the sand. Well, what a year they are having out there in Arizona. Well, they win every night. Came out of nowhere. They'll be playing the Dodgers later. We're talking about a team that lost nearly 100 games last year. A franchise that was in complete disarray. Uh, they fired their general manager, Josh Burns. They you know, fired their manager to allow Kirk Gibson to take over. A.J. Hinch was there, and then Kirk Gibson took over. And he has brought an entirely new attitude to that ball club. Ramon Hernandez, a three-run homer his first time up, and he leads off the Reds' fourth with a double. Well, it's not only the attitude that comes from Kirk Gibson, but it is the level of expectation. Fastball up again, and boy, this is a lean back right here, hammered into the gap. Two hundred fiftieth career double for Ramon Hernandez. Congratulations to him. And now the cure. Stabbed at it. And missed. It. Sam has one hit in seven at bats. He has one sacrifice. Stabbed at it again and missed it again. You don't get many chances when you're pitching out of the bullpen to get up there at the plate. No. And he's a little removed from the University of Texas, where if you couldn't bunt, you didn't get to pitch. Up. You said you thought you knew who they were. Thurman Munson and Roberto Clemente. You know, that's the one I was going to guess, Garrick. I really was. But I'm like, nah. Clemente, you got that part right. I don't think uh, Thurman Munson is a Hall he's of Famer. He's not. I just realized that. I, he would have been a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Tragically died as well in a plane crash like Roberto Clemente did. World Series most valuable player, National League most valuable player. Could hit, could run, could throw, could field, could do it all. There was not great much, players ever. Not much in the game of baseball that this man could not do. And how amazing is it that he ends his career and his life at 3,000 hits? And of course, the thing that I'm sure that he would be most proud of were he still with us here today. You know, that's quite an award to have in your name. You know, it's one thing to have, you know, for something you did on the field, but in Clemente's case, it's on the field and off the field. That is quite an honor. Uh, he, he gave a whole new meaning to giving back. Bouncer to Barney. Two are out in the inning, and Hernandez goes to third. Oh, 
Bowman has fanned four. He's walked three. All three batters that he has walked have scored. And he trails five nothing. And Torea trying to add on with a runner at third and two men out. I can assure you, Renteria is going to see some strikes here. With Votto and Bruce coming up next. Two outs or not. He'll get a pitch to hit. This four game series and nighttime affair tomorrow night. 7 10 first pitch. Randy Wells will be opposed by Homer Bailey. And then the Brewers come to town beginning Friday night. And there's a two out hit again by Renteria. He did get a pitch to hit. And he does what you're supposed to do when you get a fastball right down the cane. 6 0 Reds in front. That ball up just a little bit. Looked like that. Casey Coleman was going to try to run this ball down and away and tried to overthrow it. And anytime you have that big spin as Coleman and Johnny Cueto do before they release the baseball, when you try to overthrow, that means you come out too early with that front shoulder and the ball just elevates as it did there. Well, they have Ramon Ortiz, a right hander. They have the left hander that we saw the other night. Make his major league debut, John Gaub. So with Votto coming up, you would assume it's Gaub coming in, and it is. Short night for Coleman. Reds lead 6 0. Report card on Mike Leak. His season officially came to an end last night. And boy, could he have pitched any better than he did his final two starts? I don't know that he could have. You see, you see those numbers. And this kid's a competitor. He is uh, very relaxed and an awfully good guy to have in your clubhouse when. He's not on the mound, but when he takes the mound, and he was talking earlier about being a 200 inning pitcher, he meant it. Tell you what, there are a lot of guys out there. As you see, John Gall, we saw him make his major league debut the other night, and he looked very, very good. In his first inning, he retired the side one, two, three. They brought him out for a second inning, and he wound up giving up a couple of runs. I think we're going to see a lot of this guy over the next number of years if he stays healthy. Well, he's to finish the thought real quick, Cowboy, on Mike Leake, you know, I don't know if there are a lot of guys that basically out there over the last two years in Major League Baseball, and you really call it about a season and three quarters. 
if not a season a half because of the time he basically was right. getting shut down last year has been shut down now this year as you're really keeping an eye on his innings total coming out of college straight to the major leagues but 20 wins in really a little over a season and a quarter from a number of start standpoint but 20 wins against 12 losses and that graphic we just put up a moment ago I mean you take a look at the, the strikeout to walk ratio his first year in the major leagues you know two to one almost it's pretty good this year that's really good. Well, the, the thing that you have to remember, Mike Lee trusts his stuff. He feels like he belongs here. And that's half the battle. It may be more than half. A dog strikes out the Votto. Reds get a run and lead as we go to the fifth, six nothing. minutes before every Reds game right here on Fox Sports Ohio our Emmy Award winning rendition of Reds Live and don't forget Saturday we'll have everything for you a special one hour edition of Reds Live for the Johnny Bench ceremony the statue unveiling in its entirety the ceremony on the field JB throwing out the first pitch it's presented by Ray St. Clair Rufin. The official word from the Reds clubhouse a strained right lat. That's that muscle you see guys that are really you know really ripped and muscle bound will be that muscle that starts right around the back of your shoulder and runs down your side nearly all the way down to your waist. The ground ball to Renteria he'll throw out Darwin Barney. So that is really very very good news. You're not talking about you know something inside the shoulder. I would think it's good news Cowboy. I mean you well, know a lot about it where where it where that lat inserts into the shoulder is up in there behind the tricep and it makes up part of the rotator cuff that are all of those muscles that are in the back of the shoulder that Terry's minor and major and supraspinatus infraspinatus. I mean there's a lot of different Jeez. muscles that are in there but that lat muscle from where you have the strain that that Johnny is talking about that's that's nothing more than in my mind fatigue and maybe just getting out there a little bit overstretched on a certain pitch because of a very cool night. Let's hope that's exactly the case. And then maybe a you know, day or two stretch that thing out a lot of therapy get it worked on through a bullpen session and see where you are. Well it's a big muscle. And that's what that's when you know that it's better than having one of those little muscles I was talking about. Lou Montanez will back with two outs three pitches to get the first two outs in this inning. 
in his fifth inning, which would of course make it an official game if indeed we have rain on the way. We understand the radar does not look good. So let's see if Sam LeCure can make quick work of Montanez and let's move on down the trail. Well, anytime you have an injury, going back to Johnny just one more time, injury to a large muscle, large muscles have more blood flow than the smaller muscles. Blood flow is what allows you to heal yourself. Takes the bad stuff out and brings in the good. Straight away center, and that'll end the inning. All right, five innings in the book. Previews of Buckeyes and the Hurricanes in Colorado. Colorado State at 1:30, and we'll wrap up the night with number eight Oklahoma State taking on Tulsa following Reds Live. College football Saturday, presented by Coors Light, begins at 11 a.m. on Fox Sports Ohio. And when the Reds get it done this year with an RBI, that means another $25 goes to the Reds Community Fund. Thanks to our friends at Shakely. Shakely, it's done. John Grabo takes over on the mound. Been a busy man this year. We'll face Jay Bruce to begin the Reds bottom of the fifth inning. And the Reds leading six nothing. Reds got a three run home run from Ramon Hernandez in the second inning. A two out two run single by Juan Francisco in the third and another two out hit to drive in a run in the fourth inning off the bat of Edgar and Torrio. Tom, I, I, I tell you what, I, I think you're right about John Gobb that we will, or is it Mark Gobb? No, John, you're right. John Gobb. I really believe that we will see this guy from here on out. Uh, the stuff that he showed in both of these games, plus his minor league numbers, are just going to be phenomenal. Uh, you can compare him to the guy that's standing on the mound right now and just look at the release point, how they hide the ball, the breaking stuff, and the velocity on the fastball. Amazing. Just a lot of difference. Darwin Vardy peeled off that ball, and the shortstop came to the other side of the field to go get that. You could see the movement of that ball as it went up. It looked like 
coming off the bat it was going into right field or at least short right field and the ball ends up coming all the way back to where Starlin Jastro had to go get it. Chris Heisey is fly to center and ran it out to short. And Chris has his first hit of the night. We talked about so many of the, the youngsters earlier, and we were including Chris Heisey and talking about Juan Francisco and Yonder Alonso. But people forget that Jay Bruce is not a whole, he's younger than most of those guys. Yes. He's just been in the big leagues a little bit longer. Clearly putting together as Jay Bruce the best season of his very young major league career. It's the first year he's been able to really stay fully healthy the entire year. And has 30 home runs, career high, 90 RBIs, a career high, and he's only 24. There's one, and there's two. Mm. For a special salute to local heroes. Come early for a pregame ceremony where local police departments will join Dusty out on the field. Plus, one lucky police crew will win a red Toyota Tundra thanks to your local Toyota dealers. Six runs, seven hits for the Reds, no runs, three hits for Chicago. Sam LeCure on in relief of Johnny Cueto had to leave the game in the fourth inning. With what has been called a strained lat muscle on his right side. And hopefully he's going to be A OK. Cueto right now officially six innings shy of qualifying for the National League's ERA title. Clayton Kershaw, the man he is chasing, will pitch later tonight in Los Angeles against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Over the American League wild card, Boston blew one earlier today, falling to Toronto 5-4. to four. That is one day before the four-game showdown that begins tomorrow night. Between the team right behind Boston in that wild card race, the Tampa Bay Rays. 
taking on Terry Francona's team. That one bounced into left field, a base hit. That series will be played at Fenway Park starting tomorrow night. And right now, Tampa Bay is losing in Baltimore 4 2 in the seventh inning. If Tampa Bay can rally to win, it'll be a three game spread in the wild card race and a four game series starting tomorrow night. Oh, Billy, 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 Billy. That's big time. What do you think the tickets are costing you that? A lot. Well, you think about that Tampa Bay team, and I'm not sure there's a manager in either league who has done a better job. I'm not saying there are guys that haven't done as good a job, but I don't know if there's a manager that has done a better job than what Joe Madden has done at Tampa Bay. Very low payroll. Now, granted, they have a, a pile of talent, especially pitching talent. Well, that's but a, they've let some talent get out of there the last couple of years since they went to the World Series. They yeah. have. But, but what they have done, and Madden is, is part of this process, what they have done is they have gone out and when they have drafted, they have not made a mistake. When you when you look at the starting pitching that, that they have on that ball club and some of the starting pitching that is coming on that ball club, it is it's almost a, a round robin how they can just continue to bring it in. Johnson out of there on strikes. Tonight's Powerball jackpot up to 25 million brought to you by the Ohio Lottery play today. Of course, Tampa Bay was so bad for so long when that organization started. We say so long. I mean, they're not even you know, very old. They started playing in 1998. So. Yeah, but you're right, though. They, they, they were off. at it the wrong way to start. I mean, they were off. They were they were going after all these high price free agents and spending all this money and going nowhere while Colorado was developing from within and just bombing down there. Same thing with the, the Marlins. Of course you do have to say the Marlins did go out spend money. Mm -hmm. Well, they did. They did, but they also had a chance to develop some very good players that allowed them to make some trades to get some of those players, along with those free agents that won a World Series and Trevor Hoffman. 1997. Yep. Oh. Well, you know, you look at the, the oftentimes you'll see in college basketball, you'll see it in the uh, in the NFL a lot. We talk about a, a tree created by a manager and then maybe some of his coaches that have gone on to manage in other places or coach in other places. Tell you what that Mike Sosha tree. It's not all that long. But it's a good base one. hit in the left center field and Castro will advance first to third. But the Cubs have him on the corners with one out. When I mean, you think about the job Madden has done former bench coach under Sosha. And now what Ron Renicki has done, former bench coach under Mike Soshin, his first year managing the Brewers, and they're going to win a division championship. It's hard to argue with, with that type of situation, especially, and it, and it goes back to the general manager theme. Uh, when you have an older general manager that has had guys that have worked underneath him or worked with him that have moved out. Under their own now, and how well they've done. I mean, when you learn from some good folks, you just don't forget what you learned, and you'll be all right. No strikes.
But you know, Tom, the the bottom line with with all of those teams that that you talk about, it all comes down to pitching. That ball is lifted into deep left field, and that is up against the wall. Castro will score. They're going to hold Ramirez on a run scoring double by Pena. Cubs on the board at 6 1. You could see this one as it left the bat, and the problem is not. The height of the pitches, it's the fact that the pitches are over the middle of the plate. And this Cub Club can hit a fastball, especially the guy that hits in the number three and four spot. And this guy, Mr. Soriano. Soriano and a breaking ball just misses the outside corner. Looks like there's action down in the Reds bullpen again. Logan Andrusen. Second, Ramirez on at third. This will bring in. Well, Renteria thought about it and then realized it's a five run lead. Why take the chance? It's now a four run lead, but there are two outs in the inning. We know you're all counting down the days to face off with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and we're doing it for you all month long. Relive some of the Blue Jackets showcase games. When the Jackets host the Pittsburgh Penguins in a shootout back in March of 09 on Fox Sports Ohio. Straight away center field and Stubbs back to the track and that'll end the inning. Cubs get two, leave a man, middle of the six. Reds lead by four. Welcome back to the Coors Light six inning. Now it's time for the Coors Light freeze cam. Home run ball from Ramon Hernandez. Then the big two out, two run single from Juan Francisco. Johnny Cueto having to lead the game in the 
fourth inning with a strained lat muscle on his right side. Those are some of the big stories tonight. Our Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Reds bat in the bottom half of the sixth inning. John Grabo still on the mound, and the Reds holding a 6 to 2 lead. Well, the starters are out of the game, and the Reds put some hefty runs up on the board early. Now you got to do one of two things. You either got to pitch awfully well out of the bullpen and keep the Cubs off the board. Or you just keep running on the score. One or the other. Stubbs has walked, scored, and bounced out to third base. Three and two. Standings bouncing around baseball. Philadelphia today officially secured the NL East title, fifth year in a row. The Phillies are heading to the playoffs. Milwaukee playing right now. St. Louis winners earlier today. Talked about Arizona, that whopping eight game lead out west. Atlanta won today. The Cardinals won today. So the wild card race remains at four and a half. And of course, anything can happen. But after the meeting that the Atlanta Braves had in their locker room called by the veteran Chipper Jones, things have gone a little bit better for the old boys down there in Georgia. They got a big home run today, snapping a 1-1 tie, a three-run home run from the former Red Alex Gonzalez. And the Pittsburgh Pirates. After starting the season, uh, they were one of the teams a lot of people were talking about as, as late as the 20th of July. They were sitting in first in the National League Central. They have only won 16 games since that date. And they set a dubious Major League record today, their 82nd loss, which means that they have now had a losing season in a Major League record 19 straight years. And I think that is reason in itself why the Reds should push as hard as they possibly can to get above the 500 mark. Because when you're under 500, people think you're losers. And when you're over 500, you can at least say, we weren't losers. We're, we didn't win. But we're not losers. We had a we had a winning record. We just came up a little short. We're at the beginning play four games under the 500 mark tonight. So Pell will bat for Sam LeCure. And Barney will double up the ground ball in a one, two, three, six inning for Grabo. Red six. Cubs two. We go to the seventh.
TNT. Cincinnati Children's ranks third in the nation on U.S. News and World Report's honor roll for Best Children's Hospitals 2011. By your Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Honda dealers. Visit MyCincinnatiHondaDealer.com for current offers. And by Wendy's. You know when it's real. Top of the seventh inning. Game three of this four-game series. Cubbies won the opener on Monday night. Reds 2-1 last night. Reds lead 6-2 tonight. And now taking over following Sam LeCure is right-hander Logan Andrusik. Both Andrusik and Bill Bray at the beginning of this season. Well, really, not at the beginning. I would say at the all the way through the All-Star break. They had numbers that... Well, they were flat out incredible. I mean, both of them were under two in the ERA column, especially this guy, Andrusik. He was down around one. Well, you're right. So was Bray. Yeah. But it, you know, neither, neither one of them have been in this kind of scenario where they're pitching just nonstop out of the bullpen. And I think as, as, you move into 2012. I think both of these guys will be better for having served the way that they are been used the way that they were this year. You have to get used to being prepared out of that bullpen, and it is no easy task. It's an area that is oftentimes overlooked with all of the young position players that the Reds have brought up this year and all the debate about, you know, which guy is going to be around here next year and have a chance to play regularly. What position might that person play? There's been all that going on ever since we've seen the likes of Alonzo and Francisco and Sapeld and Mezzarocco and Frazier, among others. Thanks, Kozar, when he first came up. But as Barney has gone swinging, but when you look down in that bullpen, boy, now there's an area where there are so many question marks. Not necessarily can guys get people out, but naturally, when you're a mid market size club and you're thinking about your closer who could be a free agent, there's talk about the Reds possibly engaging in conversation soon with Francisco Cordero about bringing him back next year. What's the future hold for? A wall is Chapman, starter, reliever. Nick Massey, a guy who over the last couple of years has been absolutely lights out out of that bullpen. This year it's not been the same. He's arbitration eligible. And based on his numbers, he, he can make a pile of money. So you know, then you throw in on Drusick, you throw in Bray. Lecure looks to have a, a pretty good beat on that long man roll down there, although, of course, that's subject to change. So there's a lot going on down there and trying to figure out how all the pieces fit together depending upon who you decide to bring back. You're exactly right. And I don't know that you can go to arbitration with Nick Massey. I don't, I don't know that you can do that. And in, in this payroll, now you could do it if you were the Yankees, and run the risk, but I don't know that you can go to, to arbitration and, and put out that kind of cash for numbers that you don't know what you're going to get for it. Because that's going to be a heavy duty case. Well, if you're interested in 2012 season tickets, why not try out the 2012 season ticket test drive? What you do is you make a deposit on a new season ticket plan by this Thursday tomorrow. And you'll get five free tickets to any five remaining home games in this 2011 season. And you're able to test drive five different seat locations inside the ballpark. I think that's a great idea. It is a great idea. Visit Reds.com slash tickets right now and you're, you're running out of time. You and I talked about that last night ad nauseum about the different places in the ballpark that are so fun to sit at where everybody else thinks that the only the best seats are right behind home plate and that's not necessarily true.
This is a great ballpark to watch a game. And as you mentioned, Cowboy, uh, there might be places where you never had a chance to to maybe walk around the ballpark and take a look, sit down. We told a story last night that I'll bring my kids down and, and we'll try to do that. Bounce all over this place. And man, there are a lot of great, not good seats, a lot of great seats in this ballpark. That was one of my favorites out there in right field. And and you don't know it until you've been there. That's that, right. That's the issue. Because you think it's way far away and it's not. Well, there's a shattered bat that'll fall in a hit by the pinch hitter Tyler Colvin. Well, as rough as a year as he has had, uh, I'm sure he probably feels like he deserves that one. And in baseball terms, a cut fastball and the crack of that bat in half, it will not be used again except maybe for some firewood or maybe a souvenir. That baby died a hero. Castro has been on all three times tonight. Two hits a walk. He scored a run. Straight in the air at Drew Stubbs. A hit a man left. We stand and stretch. Reds lead 6-2. On Fox Sports Ohio for Reds Live, brought to you by Kings Honda and the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. Reds lead 6 2, batting in the bottom of the seventh inning. Right-hander Kerry Wood taking over on the mound. Well, what a career this guy has had. Of course, there are a lot of folks out there that'll say, yeah, but what could have been were it not for all the very serious arm injuries. After he first broke in the major leagues, I don't think anybody will ever forget that very frigid May afternoon at Wrigley Field his rookie year when he struck out 20 Houston Astros in a game. Wound up becoming one of the most dominant starters in the league. 
But boy, those injuries have piled up. Well, it has always been about control for Kerry Wood. And some days he has impeccable control and he's going to strike out all three batters regardless of who they are. And then there are other days where this doesn't happen. Wood finished last season, of course, start of the year as a closer with Cleveland, finished the year after being traded to the Yankees. This is that day you were talking about right here. I mean, look at some of these hitters in this lineup. Digio, Derek Bell, Bagwell. I mean, when you get in a groove like that, boy say salute. But you also see where some of those pitches were. They're elevated fastballs after he got ahead in the count. And he was just putting them down. Left, right, left, right. Makes you wonder what it was like to be Cy Young or Christy Mathewson back in the day. Strike three called on Phillips. He disagrees. Third time Brandon has struck out tonight. You don't see that very much. Uh -huh. Even the best have tough day. Andy. Reds fans, if you're in the restaurant industry, let JTM Food Group help you with great tasting products for your menu. Inspired solutions, better results. That's JTM. Are you going to go see that movie Moneyball? Well, I don't know. You know, we've been running that clip. Of course, Brad Pitt, the big star of that movie, portraying uh, Billy Bean, the longtime general manager of the Oakland Athletics. Right. Based on the book. Great book. Very interesting book. When it first came out, I, I didn't read it. And then we were going out a couple of years ago, the Reds, to play the Oakland A's and figured, you know what? We're going out there. Let's see if we can uh, knock that baby out in about a week or so. And of course, the playing ride alone, you can put a major dent going from here to Oakland. Right. And we'd already asked Billy Bean about joining us on a pregame show out there and joining us for an interview. And it is a very enjoyable book. Very interesting. Some of the inner workings of a Major League Baseball team working on a small market and really bringing in the statistical analysis of Major League Baseball. And it's a good read. So you liked it, huh? I liked the book very, very much. I thought just to sit down and to read a book, it was a very, very interesting book. I don't necessarily agree with everything in there. I think there's certainly a place for a lot of this stuff in there. Right. I think you're starting to see Major League Baseball go to a lot of that. You know, not everything has to be on an extreme. And I think that's what was the first reaction in a lot of circles around baseball. There were a lot of people that were, were angry at Billy Bean. Billy Bean didn't write the book. Michael Lewis wrote the book. Exactly. And there were a lot of people, I mean, raving mad at Billy B. As though he were trying to reinvent the wheel. And, you know, Billy Bean was just trying to do, at least from what I gathered from the book, he was trying to do successful. the best that he could for what he had. Well, I think a lot of folks felt like he gave away trade secrets, and that was not the case. All he was trying to do was make a contender out of the Oakland Athletics with a small budget. And making a contender is tough enough with a small budget. That's times 10. You know, obviously the the thing more than anything else that, that he was so fortunate to do was to draft so well and then hit the lottery primarily with three pitchers. Who yeah. were on top of their game and helped lead that team to the playoffs. Alder, Hudson, and Zito. That's right. Otto gone on strikes and that'll end the inning. So we go to the eighth where the Reds still lead 6 2.
Ramon Hernandez clubbing home run number 12 and gave the Reds a 3 0 lead. Right now, the pitcher of record in this game would be Sam LeCure. Johnny Cueto had to leave with a strained right lat muscle with two outs and nobody on in the fourth. LeCure goes two and a third, allows a couple of runs on Drusik. One hit, two strikeouts, no runs in an inning. And now we get a look at Nick Massey. Nick Massett, you see the numbers. They're better now than they were three weeks ago. But he again had a very difficult start getting out of the gate, out of spring training. And then put together a pretty good month or two and then just couldn't quite get consistent at all. It really is him. you thought he was going to do it again for what would be a third straight year where he had a rocky April and then he was lights out for the last two years May through the end of the season. I mean as good as anybody in the league. But this year. He hit that second bump in the road. And I think a lot of that for Nick goes back to. Consecutive. Work days. Where Andrusik and Bill Bray were filling spots that he had filled last year. And for a reliever, it's your detriment is always not getting enough work. You're always better getting more work than not enough. Well, Cowboy, if that is true, there's a fly ball to left field. I mean, heck, you were down there for 10, 12 years. Nobody knows it better than you do. Then why do people make such a big deal about bullpens getting overworked? That, I don't know. So you don't believe in it? No. Wow. It's interesting. Well, let me ask you this. Is there a difference between... Maybe being ridden a little hard one year, but you know, getting a little bit more of a break the following year. Because let's face it, the last three years, Nick Massett's been ridden pretty hard. And I mean, it's not to say that, that that is no indictment on the Reds' pitching coach, the Reds' manager, whoever it is. Right. That's just a state of the Reds' pitching staff. It has been good, but it's been inconsistent. Right. And especially early in the year, the last couple of years, where the bullpen has really been taxed the first couple of months of the year. Right. Because and Massett's because been here the, longer than anybody else except the closer. Right. Because of the young starting staff. Right. But both Bill Bray and Logan Andrusik fall really into the same category that Massett does in, in that scenario because of the fact that when when everybody was on that smooth rotation in the beginning of the season, everybody's numbers in that bullpen were lights out. I mean, they were everybody was working in the right spot and they were getting them out as fast as they could, as fast as they could. Well, all of a sudden you get to a situation where instead of pitching in the sixth inning, you're pitching six, seven, eight, and you're pitching 9, 10, 11, 12. You know, those those are the kinds of games that if you if you mismanage them and you don't do it the right way and you ride somebody a little bit harder than you should have, you're going to mess him up for two or three weeks and he may not get back to where you need him to be. Oh, and two on Carlos Pena. And a good breaking ball there. That's a pretty impressive inning right there for Matt. Side retired in order. Reds back bottom of the eighth, leading 6 2.
dog play of the game. Early on, the double play. Andrew leadoff single by Castro in the first inning. Got Johnson. Francisco to Phillips on the bottom. Six two ball game Reds in front and now taking over a one time red right hander Ramon Ortiz. We saw him in the series open. Terry Wood a perfect inning with a couple of strikeouts. Driving play by Ramirez gets up and just does get Jay Bruce. Nice play by Ramos Ramirez. Tries to go that way and find that hole where they shift it over. But Ramirez makes a nice diving snag. I'd like to thank our good friends from Papa John's Pizza for feeding our entire crew before the ball game. That was very, very kind. You were digging into that cowboy. Tell anybody. Oh. That's blasted in the left field off the bat of Heisey. His 16th home run of the year. That's a lot of home runs, man, for a part-time player. Shouldn't be a part-time player. That is a lot of home runs. That came up to the big leagues, the minor league player of the year. How many times have I said that? About a million. Watch him hit this ball. At 16 home runs and 230 something at bats. Let's see, that would that would probably be more than anybody else on this whole team in a regular season. On the ground, two outs in the inning. You can follow the Reds with MLB.com at bat 11. Just text it back to 31826 or visit Reds.com for more details. And there's a jam shot one hopper Barney. That's a nice play to get a speedy stuff had to barehand it Home run by Heisey in the inning Cubs will bat in the ninth trailing seven to two
for the Nissan drive of the game. You just saw it in the Reds' half of the eighth inning. Home run to left field off the bat of Chris Heisey. Giving the Reds a 7 2 lead. Cubs will bat in the ninth inning, sending up Soriano, Bird, and Barney. A couple of changes for the Reds at shortstop and on the mound. Paul Yanish takes over for Renteria. And then to close things out is Jose Arredondo. This guy's put together a good year. Well, his numbers are much better than the way things started. But when you come back from Tommy John surgery, I don't care what anybody says. The first year and a half, sometimes two years, it's awfully difficult to find that release point and get back to being comfortable on the mound. And that's the one thing we have seen when he is throwing strikes. And really, a lot of his problems were caused by the very first batter they would face in an inning. Yeah, because he would walk him. Yep. Or hit him. And I think we have seen that. You know, when you see his stuff and the way it has continued to improve as this season has gone on, it's filthy. After missing all of last year's Cowboy mentioned following the Red signed him knowing that he would undergo Tommy John surgery. Dr. Kremchek took care of that, and here he is. Started the year on the disabled list and was working his way back up with a major league club. And since getting here after initial bouts of wildness, good, real good one night, not so good the next. And I think you pitched in the number of games that he's pitched in, the league's hitting 220 against you. You've got an ERA knocking on the door, too. That's a very good year. And I think that's, that's what you get when you have that surgery. And it's not, it's not an opinion, it's just the way that it is. I mean, look at that breaking ball there. I mean, he's he's really just now coming into his own, and here we are about ready to shut her down. Now that breaking ball is a pitch we never saw early in the year. No. Everything was fastball split. Right. And now all of a sudden, you you add that little wrinkle of a, a slider with a little giddy up on it with that fastball. Yeah, but earlier in the season, when he would try to throw that fastball there, it would go almost to the helmet of the right handed hitter. Feet foul, and he sets up and throws a strike to first base. And I'm talking about a firm strike. Look where he is. He's almost on the warning track. Yeah. I brought it up earlier. The more you get a chance to watch this young man play, I don't know how you can't walk away and be more than very, very impressed. And his minor league numbers speak for themselves. I mean, nobody has put up the power numbers. Nobody. Not Bruce is a minor leaguer. Not Votto is a minor leaguer. Nobody has put up the offensive numbers in the Reds' minor league system then, like uh, Juan Francisco. Right. Nobody. But we've just never had a chance to see him play regularly yet. Well, at and, the big and, league level. And we've also not seen him play defensively like this. He shed some weight, he's quicker, and he's taking it serious at third base. It's not just all about hitting anymore, it's about playing the game the right way. And boy, has he come on. Now, this ought to. Take care of business, and it does on the ground out to Yanish. Off the bat of Darwin Barney, and the Reds have made it back-to-back -back wins after dropping the opener. 
on this final homestand of a 2011 year. And they have pulled their record to within now three games of the 500 mark. Final count of seven to two. We'll be back with more from Great American Ballpark. Reds win.